Hello, welcome to this week's lecture covering the NumPy library, which is the first library we'll get into in this course, and also arguably the most important library um, there is for scientific programming in Python. Many of the other libraries that we'll also get into uh, in this course will build up on NumPy, and it's also um, very useful and it has a lot of functions that can make your life easier when working with any kind of data. Okay, so we start with an introductory example. And here we just want to um, take the average of a couple of numbers that we have. And for that, we first need to uh, create these numbers. Um, you can see them as measurements from some experiments, but for now we'll just create them randomly. For that, we'll use the random um, library that is built into uh, Python. And we'll create random integers between 150 and 200. And as you can see here, we'll create a million integers and then just print the first hundred to see that it worked. And yeah, you can see we've got a lot of random integers. Um, yeah, and we would like to create the mean, so the average of these values. So first we would like to try that in normal Python. And we wrote this uh, mean function here, which takes values and just goes over all these values, adds them up and gen, yeah, just divides by the number of values, basic mean. Um, but yeah, this is quite slow. And if we run the time it, we can see that this took 42 milliseconds, uh, which is not slow, but um, compared to other methods of taking the average, this is quite slow. And we would like to improve this performance. One thing we can already do without NumPy, but just normal Python, is we can use these, um, these built-in functions that um, make our life easier. For example, this sum. And to sum, we can pass this um, collection, our measurements, and then just divide by the length of these measurements. And if we do this and time this again, this will be um, a lot faster already. So you can see this just took uh, seven milliseconds. But imagine having maybe not a million numbers, but um, a billion numbers. And maybe you don't want to do just the mean, but you would uh, like to create some more complicated um, computation on your numbers. And then these seven milliseconds per operation can still be a lot and can take a very long time. Um, since normal experimental data usually is not um, in the form of a million integers. So yeah, what Python does in the background here is um, it goes through all these numbers in the list and then um, adds them up using the sum function. And during this addition, Python will have to figure out what the types are. And it will have to do that for every number and figure out what the type is and what kind of add function it should call. Um, as you heard in last lecture, we have these dunder functions and it's gonna call the dunder add function for every um, pair of numbers. Um, and this is going to take a long time because Python has to figure out during runtime, uh, what types it has uh, to call these functions on. So it would be nice if we were able to um, tell Python what type it is, so that Python doesn't have to figure out the type uh, while running it. And for that, NumPy uh, is very helpful. We can use the NumPy library here. And um, yeah, we first import it using the import keyword, um, and then just saying import NumPy, and we say this as NP. And this tells Python that it should rename this NumPy library as uh, NP. So we want to refer to this NumPy module as NP. And this is just a convention. Um, this is normally how you import NumPy. It would also work if you just import NumPy. Um, but then if you want to access functions from NumPy, you would have to write NumPy dot the function. And if we rename this as NP, we just have to say NP dot function. Um, yeah, and it doesn't really matter, but everyone does this and yeah, it's just a convention. So now we've imported NumPy and we can create a NumPy array of these measurements. And NumPy arrays are the uh, objects that we will work uh, with all the time. And we can create NumPy arrays from lists by using the np.array function. And this just takes a collection. In this case, we, uh, we call it measurements. And this will create a NumPy array of that. And the type of this array is ND array. So NumPy's uh, class name for their arrays is ND array, which stands for n-dimensional array. 
And this already suggests that we can um, do more than just normal lists. So we can also do multi-dimensional arrays here. But first, for our one-dimensional array, we've created it here. And then NumPy also supports the printing of this. And as you can see here, it left out some numbers in the middle, uh, represented by this dot, dot, dot. But then it just prints out the array. And as we can see here, the type is ND array. So array. Okay, and um, yeah, as I said before, we would like to tell Python what the type of the numbers is beforehand. And NumPy has already done this in the background, and it saved the type that it figured out uh, in this dot dtype attribute. And if we print this, we can see that the dtype, so the data type uh, of this array is in 64, meaning uh, that Python figured out our data uh, is in the format of an integer, and it uh, by default assigned a 64-bit integer to this data. And if it says 64 or 32, this uh, might depend on the system. So some systems um, by default use 64-bit integers, some other systems use 32-bit uh, integers. Um, yeah, this depends on how your CPU is built. But on my machine here, um, it uses 64 ints, 64-bit ints, um, which just means that the numbers, each number um, is represented by 64 bits in memory. Um, yeah, we can also just use the normal indexing that we know from Python lists on these arrays. And this is just a quick example, uh, which shows you that we can get the, the first element using this square bracket zero. Um, and we can use uh, the, uh, the colon syntax in the square brackets as well. So here we get the values from uh, index 10 to index 15. Okay, and now coming back to our example at the top, we would like to create the uh, we would like to calculate the mean of these uh, numbers, and NumPy has a function for that. It's called mean, uh, and we call it using this np uh, name that we imported, and just call np.mean, and pass our measurements array, and um, yeah, let's see how fast this is. And um, yeah, using these built-in NumPy functions, we can. Um, yeah, tell NumPy or Python uh, that all of these uh, values in the array have the same type. So when summing them up and then dividing, uh, Python doesn't have to figure out um, what what data type all the values have, but it just knows because all of them in this array have the same data type. And here we have the result. It just took 1.29 uh, milliseconds. So yeah, this is um, significantly faster even than using the sum, which took 7.4 milliseconds. And um, yeah, whenever you can use these NumPy functions, uh, you should, because they just speed up everything by a lot. Um, and yeah, this could be the difference between running your code for a couple of hours versus uh, a couple of minutes. So this makes a lot of difference if you have large amounts of data and more complicated computations. Okay, so now looking at the anatomy of arrays, uh, just a collection of some very useful attributes. Uh, we've covered dtype already. dtype tells you the data type uh, of the certain array, and by default, um, as you see, as you saw above, uh, Python used a uh, number used an integer, and that is because uh, it found that the Python list contained only integers. And when creating these arrays uh, using the array function, we can also tell uh, NumPy what type it should use. And in this example, we create a NumPy array and tell it that it should be the type int. And here you can see this worked as well, and it's assigned uh, in 64 again. Then we can also um, tell it it should create um, an array using the bool type. So this will create the same array using these same values but then um, convert them to booleans. So here you can see um, that the values in the array are false and then trues, and uh, the dtype is boolean. So yeah, this is just what we told it to do. And um, as you heard in the basic Python lecture, um, these values, these numerical values get uh, converted to booleans uh, using this bool function, this built-in bool function where zero is false and the positive numbers are all trues. So yeah, this is what we get from creating an array with the data type bool. Um, yeah, and now we have a new example where we use different values and 
these values are integers except for this middle one this is a float and um, python will figure this out and see that they don't all have the same data type and then it will choose the one um, that has the smallest common denominator um, meaning that it will take the data type which doesn't throw away any information so integers can be represented as floats but not the other way around and um, this means that numpy will use um, a float as the data type and not the integer because if it were to use an integer then it would have to throw away this uh, decimal part of the 2.5 so yeah if we create um, this array we can see here that um, it added the values and has still has the 2.5 in here and the data type now is float 64 and here again this might be float 32 for you um, but yeah this differs uh, on different machines and there's not too big of a difference. 64 just means that it has more bits to represent this number and that it can store um, larger number, numbers uh, with more decimal uh, values than a 32-bit number. Um, but for most calculations, this doesn't matter. And 32-bit is usually enough, but um, there are some calculations, some, um, yeah, some things that need more precision and for that 64-bit is preferred. Okay, um, yeah, and here again, um, you just see that um, if we use the integer array that we created up here, which has the data type int, and we try to assign a float to uh, one of these um, elements, so we take the second one here and try to assign 2.5, then uh, NumPy will not change the data type of this array and uh, it will keep it as an integer array and then just convert this 2.5 to an integer. So you can see that uh, this 2.5 uh, here became a 2 and the data type is still in 64. Um, now if we have these strict data types um, we have a problem uh, that also occurs in other statically typed languages um, namely uh, overflows for example and with NumPy we can have overflows. Python doesn't have overflows because it will um, automatically figure out what type it, um, it should use and um, work against these problems. But NumPy has static types and um, because of that we can also encounter the overflow for example. And here we created um, an array um, and said the data type should be u int 8. And u stands for unsigned and the 8 means 8 bits. So this tells Python that it should create uh, this array using unsigned integers with 8 bits. And uh, the unsigned in this case means that um, yeah, it doesn't have a sign, all of the numbers are positive. So there are no negative numbers. And uh, these 8 bits, so one byte, um, can represent the numbers from 0 to 255. And if we didn't have the u here, and it would just be a normal int, then it would use the values from uh, negative 128 to positive 127, which is the same number, uh, the same amount of numbers, um, but just includes negative values. Okay, and um, yeah, you can see here that it created this array, and here these numbers 0 to 4, they don't uh, make a problem and uh, they are all in this range from 0 to 255 um, of the unsigned int 8 and so that is fine but now if we try to add 255 to this second element so we add 255 to this one here we'll have a problem um, which is that this value would be 256 but uh, unsigned integers with 8 bits just go to 255 so what will numpy do? Um, yeah, it will just use the normal arithmetic that is defined on your computer, uh, which is um, if you add the two numbers up, it will do the bit operations um, correctly. And this 255 um, would be uh, just eight ones, so eight bits with the value one, and uh, that is 255. And then if you add one, or other way around, one plus one, 255, it will add... Um, a single bit, uh, so a single one to that, which will cause all the bits um, of this 255 to flip to zero. And um, theoretically it would create a new bit, um, which is one higher up. 
uh, which would be 1, to represent the number 256, but this would be the ninth bit, and since we said it should only have 8 bits, it will just discard this and uh, wrap around to 0. So if we add 255 to the second one here, to this one, we'll get a 0, because um, this was an overflow, and uh, this overflowed the amount of bits that uh, were available. All right, and uh, now we can also have a look at the types here. So if we uh, look at the type of the first element in this measurements array that we had above, this will be in 64, so NumPy in 64. And then if we just look at a normal um, integer in Python and use the type of that, this will be int. So this is a Python built-in um, integer class, and this is the NumPy integer 64 class. So these are not the same and um, this can lead to some problems. Uh, one of these problems, for example, is that um, yeah, we have different precisions and um, we use different values. Um, so NumPy and Python get to different results when doing the same operation. And in this case, uh, we create this value variable, uh, which is 1.2 minus 1.0, which is uh, just 0 0.2 and then we create an array and uh, just include this one value. So we just put this uh, 0 0.2 in there and say this should be a float32. And yeah, by the way, uh, these types are also defined as attributes of this NP, of NumPy. Um, and you can also use float64 for, uh, for example here, or int64, or just int, then it will use the default integer uh, bit number. Uh, these don't have to be strings, so you can pass these NumPy uh, attributes or strings or even the uh, Python built-in types. So all of those work. Um, but now in this example, we will um, compare these two. So we create uh, compare this value that we created up here and also the zeroth element of the array. So this value inside this array. And we'll see um, these are not the same. And the problem here is that we have uh, floating point imprecision problems and um, for the Python value here, we come very close to this um, 0 0.2, but it's just yeah 0 0.1, then a lot of nines, and then a six. And this comes from um, yeah the computer not being able to represent everything that it needs for these cal calculations. And this is a common problem with floats uh, in many languages that uh, these calculations usually are not 100% correct. Um, but just very close to correct. Uh, this is just, yeah, this is just the way it is with floats in computers. And uh, yeah, this value in the NumPy array is then a little more than 0 0.2. Also not much, but yeah, if we compare these two, we'll get a fault because technically these are not the same. And one way to get around this is uh, using this epsilon. And um, here we define epsilon as a very small number. And uh, using this uh, way of writing down numbers uh, using the exponent. It's also possible in Python and this just means uh, we take 1 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, as you can see here and yeah this is just a small number we can use to compare these values and then the actual comparison is uh, we take the absolute value of um, the one value minus the other one and then uh, compare this to this epsilon. So if this is this absolute value is smaller than epsilon um, then we consider them as the same. And if uh, it's larger than epsilon, we say it's, um, yeah, it's not the same. And for these two examples, uh, if we take the difference and then the absolute value of that, this is indeed smaller as this, uh, smaller than this epsilon value. So we could consider these uh, the same, which would be uh, semantically correct in this case because we just used the same value here. So it should have been the same and using this epsilon, we can ensure that yeah, it will be. And now to end this, um, I will just show you some more useful um, attributes of this um, uh, NumPy array. Uh, first, we have the shape and endem. Shape and endem are um, very useful for figuring out uh, the dimensions of uh, arrays. And as I said before, these arrays are not always uh, one-dimensional, so we don't always have just one list of values, but we can also have more dimensions. 
and uh, yeah, shape will tell you the um, number of elements in each dimension and the endem attribute will tell you how many of these dimensions do you have. So in this first example, we uh, also have a one dimensional array and shape will return five. And um, you can see it has parentheses and this comma here. Um, this is just the way Python represents uh, tuples with just one element. So this shape is always a tuple. And uh, for a one dimensional array, this is just um, a tuple with one element because it just has one dimension. And uh, these parentheses and the comma tell, Pyth uh, tell you that uh, yeah, this is a tuple with just one element. And yeah, the end, uh, endem, so the number of dimensions is one, uh, which makes sense because th this is a one dimensional array. Now we create a two dimensional one, so a matrix. And uh, NumPy can also print these uh, more dimensional arrays in a nice way, um, which is, uh, yeah, more readable than just writing uh, all the values after one another. And we use this, um, yeah, we use the multiplication on lists to create this two dimensional array. And as you can see here, uh, if we just execute this, it will create uh, three lists inside one big list. Um, and yeah, it will just repeat this inner list uh, three times. So now what is the shape of this one? Uh, the shape here is three, five. And here um, NumPy uses the same convention that is also used in mathematics for matrices. Um, so you first count the number of rows and then the number of columns. So three, three rows and five means five columns. Um, yeah, and the number of dimensions now is two. We can access um, the uh, elements of more dimensional arrays using the square bracket syntax again, but now we can include a comma as well, and this comma will um, separate the dimensions. So this first one says uh, take the first, um, yeah, take the second element of the first dimension, and then after the comma, um, it will know that we are now looking at the second dimension, and here will also take the first, uh, the second element. So in this case, this is one, and uh, this would be this one here in the middle. So we take the first um, first dimension one, which would be this row, the middle row, and of that, we also take the second element, which is this one. And yeah, this is how this um, multidimensional index works. Uh, we can also, of course, assign um, values to these uh, indexed um, arrays. And now we've uh, set the element at 1, 1 to 10. Okay, um, now the next example, we have a three-dimensional array. And NumPy will print this as these blocks. And you can imagine these uh, three-dimensional arrays as basically um, uh, cubes of values. And you can uh, take slices of the cube, uh, which are matrices and it will print these matrices, these slices of this uh, cube, as uh, blocks here. So this is the first slice, um, the first matrix, then this one would be stacked behind the first one, and then this one even behind that, and so on. Um, yeah, so this is a three-dimensional um, yeah, array in NumPy, and this is just the way that it is printed. Now the shape of this is 6, 3, and 5. So we have, uh, in the first dimension, 6 values, so you can see here we have six of these blocks and three, again, the number of rows in this uh, matrix. So we have three rows per matrix here. And then five is again the number of columns. And yeah, the number of dimensions is three. This makes sense. Okay, and um, now looking at our two-dimensional array again, there is another um, very important attribute that can, you can use. Um, with matrices, you often uh, want to transpose them, and uh, this is useful for a lot of calculations. Um, and NumPy supports a very easy way to do this. Uh, you can just uh, add the dot t, and this attribute will give you the same array, but just transposed. So yeah, transposing uh, this array gives us this one, and this is very helpful, yeah. And then just to show you, there are lots of other um, functions and attributes that NumPy arrays have, and we'll cover uh, some of them um, in this lecture. 
but uh, for now these ones I showed you are the most important I would say uh, to figure out with what kind of an array you're dealing with. Okay, and in the next video we'll cover how we create arrays in different ways.